I mentioned a couple of videos back that uh, I practice some vague form of yoga, more or less a health thing for the increasing stiffness of my middle-aged body. Um, and how a friend of friend and I are on the same more or less course in uh, in life, and um, about at the same stage, and we're talking about stretching the spine, manipulating the, the spinal column. Uh, strictly, you know, body oriented, or I guess mind oriented as well, but not really big on the metaphysics or anything like that. Uh, I mentioned that we're talking about the um, hub of the body, which is, you know, as we understand it, with our explorations of our bodies, based somewhere at the base of the spine. And as you manipulate your spine, you tend to start from there and go upwards. Well, lo and behold, um, that looks for all the world like the progress of uh, the awakening kundalini in yoga, in Eastern medita meditation, uh, tantra, uh, hatha yoga, that kind of thing. So you get into the lazy habit of referring to these things as existent things. Pretty soon you've sort of forgotten that you've that you're only using these labels for the sake of convenience and it takes on some sort of reality in your mind. Um, next thing you know, you've got something that a third party observer would find suspiciously similar to a religion. <laughs> um, is it? Because we often catch ourselves, my friend and I, sort of saying, what are, we, what are we doing here? Like, using this kind of language, is there any danger here in sort of getting infected, as it were, by uh, habitual use? Uh, habitual proximity to this esoteric language? Uh, problem is, of course, <laughs> the things we're dealing with can't help but be dealt with using obscure and esoteric language. I don't really see how you can talk about what the experience of manipulating your muscles and your nerves, how you could actually talk about that other than using elliptical language. It's, it just seems to be that's built into the way that our languages work. If we want to talk about things that are vague like that, we need diagrams to make sense out of it, or else you tend to get lost along the way. Things just get too strange. Logic Rolls the Dice left a link to uh, a chart in the comment section of my previous video um, concerning various uh, views of the scale of things, the scale of our universe, the ladders of the mind, the ladders that go from um, uh, the, I guess you'd call it the reptilian brain all the way up to, you know, the analytical, logical mind, that kind of thing. Now, do these things exist in any way that's different from chakras existing? We call, you know, I use a term like chakra and oh, immediately the eyes start to roll and the head start to shake and I'm as guilty of that as anybody else. Um, as I say, I feel kind of stupid sometimes when I'm using that language. You don't believe in any of this rubbish. What, what, what are you using that language for? Because it's bloody convenient language to use to describe what it is that we're talking about. Same thing as any chart of anything. <laughs> um, ease of use is a seductive thing. And you get lulled into a lazy habit of mind that says that the chart that you've drawn, drawn is the thing itself, or that the chart itself is an accurate depiction of that which you are attempting to discuss, when in fact it isn't. Chakras don't exist. There's no such thing. Well, I, I guess I, I have no evidence that they don't exist, but I have no evidence that there's anything even remotely resembling a chakra out there. Um, to the point where I'm almost embarrassed to use that kind of language. But again, round in circles, right? So, what happens? Um, what's going on? What's that process by which you forget that you're using symbols and you create what can only be described as a religion? 
Um, I think you can create a religion out of just about anything if you forget that your symbols are just that. And it's bloody easy to forget. Um, it's really easy to forget that you're you're not talking about the symbols. You're talking about the things that the symbols represent. Um, when you meditate, they do warn you that there's so many snares to fall in when you're sort of trying to deconstruct your mind or when you're trying to um, analyze yourself. There are so many things that, that can trap you and confuse you and mislead you um, that people who get into meditation or self-reflection or whatever should really think twice before they do it because you don't know what you're going to find when you start gazing into the dreamscape of your own mind. Um, how, how much of your own thinking is actually symbolic? How much of your own thinking is actually just based upon maps of reality that you yourself have drawn in your own mind? Your view of time uh, might not be what you would like it to be. Your view of space might be outmoded um, in terms of one way of thinking, whereas it's perfectly adequate for another. Uh, any number of things that you think about and you sort of take for granted in your normal daily life um, can start to look strange. So you need symbols to deal with these things. You can't just know, talk in ellipses forever. You have to have something tangible that you, when you want to talk about something, you have a label there to hand. But what happens over time is that these things take on a life of their own. Um, a narrative comes out or a mythology and that's one of the traps that you fall into. And you can you can create a religion about just about anything simply by mistaking the symbols or the labels for that which they represent or for that which you yourself have decided they represent for the purposes of utility. Chakras don't exist, but I want to talk about the hub of my body at the base of my spine where I can anchor my entire body in order to stretch or at least relax every muscle or as many as possible all at once. That doesn't mean that these chakras exist any more than the actual ladders or rungs on ladders in the chart that Logic Rolls the Dice linked to my channel. I'll link both of these below. I'll give you a map of the chakras and a link to Logic Rolls the Dice's link uh, page. I honestly don't think the two are any different. Their attempts with symbols to describe that, which is precious hard to describe without symbols. Um, careful of those symbols. 